Good morning, everyone. As you enter our sanctuary this morning, that means you're a little early, and that means we get to sing Christmas carols before we start the service. You may have a Christmas hymn booklet like this, or you're free to use our uh, hymn book as well. Let's start by singing this morning hymn number 254. It's in both of those booklets. We Three Kings. Let's stand and sing verses 1, 2, and 5, please.
Christmas verses 1, 2, and 5. Thank you for singing. It is wonderful to see you all this morning as we are worshiping on this uh, fourth Sunday in the season of, of Advent and the eve of Christmas Eve, of course, as well. Um, and in, in a moment, uh, Reverend Chuck Graff will tell you about our services uh, tomorrow. Uh, and uh, I hope that you'll uh, plan to be a part of uh, at least one of those uh, worship opportunities uh, here in the sanctuary. Today, we are continuing our series from the hymn Silent Night. Tomorrow is the 200th anniversary of the first singing of the hymn Silent Night. And the verses of the hymn follow the great themes of Advent. Peace, love, hope, joy. The verses follow uh, those great themes and today we are thinking together about joy and uh, what that means for us in this Advent uh, and Christmas season. Welcome again.
Well, good morning again, and welcome to First United Methodist Church. I'm Reverend Chuck Graff, associate pastor here at the church. We want to welcome you if you're home for the holidays, if you're traveling through and first time with us today, first time guest or long time member with us, we're grateful you're here today. If you'd like more information about our congregation, you can stop by our amazing welcome center that's just outside my door to the left. We have laity there and staff will help you and give you more information and guidance around our, our building as well today. Well, I'd like to refer you first uh, to the attendance pads located at the end of your pews. If you please take those and sign in this morning. We like your registration today, whether you're a member or guest with us, helps us keep track of those who are with us today. And also uh, in your bulletin insert today, I'd like to refer you to the services tomorrow, our special Christmas Eve services. They start at noon. We have six services all together tomorrow. Uh, the noon candlelight service, the 3.30 and 5 o'clock family candlelight services. And then we have the traditional services at 7, 9, and 11 tomorrow evening. You can come at 11 and bring in Christmas Day with us if you'd like tomorrow night too. So you have lots of options. We hope you'll come tomorrow and bring your family and friends, any guests who like to worship with us as well. Also a reminder that next Sunday, uh, we only have one service and it'll be at 11 o'clock here in the sanctuary. All the services will be combined that we have into one service with many participating from those various services. So one service next Sunday at 11 o'clock right here in the sanctuary. Our holiday hours are listed there as well because we'd like you to consider giving a second mile gift to the church as we end the year. You'll notice there where we stand on the right hand column at the bottom in terms of giving for the year, but we encourage you to please help us finish the year well, finalize our budget uh, goals that we've had for the year, and help us start the new, and a really good, new year in a really good place. You can give online, you can give during these office hours, or just stop by the main office, and help us again finish this new year well. Well, we look forward to the uh, excitement of the services tomorrow evening as well, and look forward to seeing you there as well. So let's continue to worship God in spirit and in truth.
In that region, there were shepherds living in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly was the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those who found favor. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, and it had been told to them. Today we light the fourth candle of Advent as the symbol of joy. Let us pray. God of good news, you have brought joy into this world with the gift of your presence made known to us in Jesus. In the midst of both time of happiness and times of sorrow or suffering, let us find our true heart's joy in you and your love. Amen. statement of faith for Advent, which is printed in your bulletin. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. 
All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Amen and amen. Please be seated. Baptism is a sacred time in the life of this congregation and, and to this family. And I invite now Addison Joy and Cooper Anthony to come forward for baptism. I think she's ready. Brothers and sisters in Christ, baptism is a sign to us of the mercy and grace of God. It is a sacrament indicating that we do not come into relationship with God on the basis of anything that we have done or anything that we have accomplished, but simply on the basis of God's gracious invitation of love to us. Baptism is an especially appropriate symbol of this kind of grace. Remember these words. Jesus said, let the little children come to me. Do not hinder them, for such as these belongs the kingdom of God. It's okay. It's fine. So I ask you, do you uh, affirm your faith in Christ? Yes. <laughs> And do you promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church that Christ is open to people of all ages, all nations, and all races? And will you nurture these children in Christ's holy church that by your teaching and example they may be guided to accept God's grace for themselves, to profess their faith openly, and to lead a Christian life? Hmm? Okay. It's going to be all right. It's going to be fine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Addison, here we go. Addison Joy, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Addison Joy, the Holy Spirit work within you that being born of water and the Spirit, you'll remain a faithful disciple of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. Here we go. You ready? Okay, Cooper. <laughs> Bless her heart. Cooper Anthony, I baptize you in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And Cooper Anthony, the Holy Spirit work within you, that being born of water and the Spirit, you will remain a faithful disciple of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, now, <clears throat> something about baptism. This is a sign of God's grace poured out on us, no matter the circumstances, right? <laughs> whether we are aware of it or not, whether we can embrace it or not at the moment, and the time will come uh, when she will be able to embrace it, right? <laughs> And, uh, and you and I have a role to play in that. And uh, listen, we all have our good days and our bad days, right? <laughs> Nobody bats a thousand. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so we remember that, and we do our best, by God's grace, to live before these children the life Christ has called us to, and to do everything we can to act in loving ways, to speak with loving words, uh, and help them know the love and the grace of God. And so we pledge ourselves to do what we can 
uh, to, to, uh, to that end. And so now we take that pledge. Okay, join me please. Brothers and sisters. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm on the wrong page. I'm sorry. <laughs> With God's help, we will so order our lives after the example of Christ that Addison Joy and Cooper Anthony, surrounded by steadfast love, may be established in the faith and confirmed and strengthened in the way that leads to life eternal. We all need grace. <laughs> Our scripture reading this morning comes from Philippians, the fourth chapter. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And a peace of God, which surpasses all of our understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. God speaks to us through the reading of Scripture. Thanks be to God. I'd like to invite the children to come down for our time together. Kids, come see me. I'm sure you know what tomorrow is, right? What? It's Christmas Eve. So I thought what I would do, because I'm getting kind of excited for it. Are you getting kind of excited? Maybe a little bit. I thought I would tell some, uh, some Christmas dad jokes. You want some Christmas dad jokes? All right, here we go. Some of you said no because you've heard dad jokes before. So here we go. Why is it always cold at Christmas? Because it's in December. <laughs> Not bad, huh? I got a smile. Don't hiss yet. Wait, just wait to hear the next one. All right. What can you get if you eat Christmas decorations? Tinselitis. What's the difference between the Christmas alphabet and the ordinary alphabet? The Christmas alphabet has no well. That's a thinker. You got to think about that one. All right. On December 23rd, what did Adam say? It's nearly Christmas. Eve. <laughs> Thank you. If a reindeer lost his tail, where would it have to go for a new one? A retail shop. <laughs> Why was Santa's little helper sad? Because it had low elf esteem. <laughs> and finally, why didn't the colt sing Christmas carols with the other animals? He was a little horse. So those are some dad jokes. You survived it. You survived the dad jokes, right? And the jo we laugh a little bit, and they bring us a little bit of happiness or a groan, right? But that's happiness. But joy is what we're celebrating today. And joy goes a little bit deeper. In fact, all the things that we're, we are remembering and thinking about this Advent season go a little bit deeper than the, surf than the surface. It's not one of those things where it's just here for a moment and then gone. And I wanted us to remember all the things that we thought about during Advent. In fact, we got the Advent wreath right up there. You see there's three purple candles that are, have all been lit and the pink candle, which is for today. 
which is for joy. The first week we talked about peace. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to get our Advent wreath. There's five total candles. There's one in the middle. We'll light tomorrow. And look at our hand. We've got five fingers. So we've got an Advent wreath everywhere we go. So hold it up. And what we're going to do is we're going to light the first candle for peace. And there's a song that goes with it. I'm Mr. Mark. There's a song that goes with everything. And it goes like this. Light a candle for peace. Light a candle for peace. Light a candle for peace. Christmas is near. Think you can do it? Think you can do it? It's pretty simple. We can do it. Let's try it. Here we go. Light a candle for peace. Light a candle for peace. Light a candle for peace. Christmas is near. The next week, we lit a candle for hope. Let's light the hope candle and sing, light a candle for hope. Here we go. Light a candle for hope. Light a candle for hope. Light a candle for hope. Christmas is near. The next week, we lit a candle for love. Let's light a candle for love. Here we go. Light a candle for love. Light a candle for love. Light a candle for love. Christmas is near. And the joy candle is the pink one, so we're going to light our pinkies. And we're going to sing light a candle for joy. Here we go. Light a candle for joy. Light a candle for joy. Light a candle for joy. Christmas is near. And joy is different than happiness. Happiness is a joke and laughing at a joke. You know what joy is? Joy is a girl in her beautiful white gown dancing while the bells are playing and bopping her little knees in time as we got to see this morning. Peace is a comfortable lap to sit in. Hope is listening to the Christmas story and knowing something wonderful is going to happen. And love is when the most memorable baptism in a long time has just occurred and everyone around that child is patting that child and saying, you are welcome here. Jesus calls the children, not just the quiet children, not just the still children. Jesus said, let the children come and do not hinder, period. That child is a beautiful child, a love child, just as every one of us are. May the hope, peace, joy, and love of this season be in your hearts now and forever. And I'll see you tomorrow. Amen. Look at straight and
Well, what a blessing it is to be in worship today, uh, to think together about joy, about joy. Uh, great job, by the way, on the dad jokes, Mr. Mark. Uh, being somewhat a connoisseur of dad jokes, I, I appreciate that. Well, as Mr. Mark said, joy is, is a bit different from happiness. It's deeper than happiness. It's, it transcends happiness. It's not dependent so much on what's going on uh, around one, but it's it's um, it's something else. It's it's deeper than that. It 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 can exist in difficult circumstances, uh, and and also in the best of times as well. You know, I'm going to turn to the great theologian, Dr. Seuss, to help us with this, because Dr. Seuss really does have a message in his in his writings. Quite often there really is a deep message and, and in the classic How the Grinch Stole Christmas we, we certainly have that. We had a, the experience over Thanksgiving week we kept three of our grandchildren, the three uh, oldest of our grandchildren, uh, we kept them overnight and we watched together the How the Grinch Stole Christmas, the Jim Carrey uh, version of, of, the, of the story. And uh, it was the first time our our uh, grandson, Luca, uh, who is three years old, had seen the movie and, and had, for the first time, heard the, the song. You know the song? You're a mean one. I'm a tenor. I can't do it, really. <laughs> Mr. Grinch. That song. And, uh, and he was just taken with the Grinch. I mean, really taken with the Grinch. More or less obsessed with the Grinch. And, and with that song... Uh, it has become his favorite Christmas song. <laughs> and uh, he knows every word of it. Uh, and if we had a screen in the sanctuary, I would show you a video of him singing that song. 
Uh, yesterday, in fact, uh, they were over at, at the house and we were playing and, and we were in the playroom and, and um, his, his dad, Alex, uh, and uh, Luca and I were sitting on the floor playing and, and, um, and, and Luca wanted to hear the Grinch song on what has come to be known, Alex's phone, as the Grinch phone. And uh, so he put it on and it was in an endless loop over and over again, the Grinch song. He just loves it. I said to my son-in-law, Alex, I said, you know, Alex, you have not properly thanked Susan and me for introducing Luca uh, to the Grinch. Uh, and he, with not much enthusiasm, said thank you, and, uh, and we went on. But, uh, but Luca, has, Luca understands the message. Uh, the, the other day they were in a store, and he was singing the Grinch song, and, and someone noticed it, and, and our daughter Katie said, you know, Luca, the Grinch is not a very nice person. And Luca said... Yes, but at the end, his heart grew three sizes. He got the message, right? Something happened to him. Something transformed him. And what it was, was this coming to understand something about real Christmas joy. And, uh, you know, the story, I, I bet, how the Grinch hates Christmas. And so he decides that he will steal Christmas. Uh, he'll take all the all of Christmas away from the Who's down in, in Whoville. And, uh, and there won't be a Christmas celebration uh, anymore. And, uh, and so he plans it out. Uh, he goes in the middle of the night. He steals all the decorations, all the food, all the gifts. And then he waits the next morning to hear the crying and the wailing down in the valley because their Christmas will have been stolen from them. And, and they'll be they'll feel terrible. But instead, he hears singing coming from the valley. And you know, in the animated uh, version, the Who's are singing, Welcome Christmas, come this way. Welcome Christmas, Christmas Day. Christmas Day is in our grasp so long as we have hands to clasp. And they sing, Christmas Day will always be just as long as we have we. And welcome Christmas while we stand heart to heart and hand in hand. And, and he hears them singing and he at first doesn't understand how it could be possible and here's what Dr. Seuss writes and the Grinch with his Grinch feet ice cold in the snow stood puzzling and puzzling how could it be so it came without ribbons it came without tags it came without packages boxes or bags and he puzzled three hours till his puzzler was sore then the Grinch thought of something he hadn't before. Maybe Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas, perhaps, means a little bit more. He got it. And then his heart grew three sizes that day. Joy. It's not dependent on what's going on. It's not ribbons and packages and bags and decorations and food and all of that. When we speak of joy at Christmas time, we're not talking about those things. In fact, in the Christian faith, when we speak of joy beyond Christmas time, in, at any time, we're talking about something that goes much deeper than what's going on around us. It's based on something else. In the words from Paul that we heard a moment ago from Philippians, Paul says, rejoice in the Lord always. Rejoice in the Lord always. Sometimes people hear that and, and rejoice always. How, how, do you, how do you do that? In a time of difficulty, in a time of uncertainty, in a time of grief, when something is, is going wrong, how, how do you rejoice in, in that time? And there's that little phrase that sometimes we, we just read past and it's in the Lord. See, Paul, when he talks about the life to which we are called, when he talks about our life as a follower of Jesus, he speaks of us living in Christ, in the Lord, that we live in the Lord and the Lord lives in us. And, and it's that depth of confidence. It's the love of God made flesh, the word made flesh, God with us, Emmanuel. It's the hope and it's the peace 
And it's that love that leads us to joy, a kind of confidence, and knowing that whatever happens, it will be okay, because we're not alone in this. We live in Christ and Christ in us. God is with us. We are not alone. A wonderful tradition in one of the Native American, American tribes for the uh, rite of passage, uh, the kind of initiation for uh, a young boy into adulthood uh, is a ritual that involves being alone. Young boy, about age 13, about on his 13th birthday, on a dark night, is blindfolded and taken by the elders out into the woods far away and is left alone there. Now, of course, he's been prepared for this. He's been taught that the great spirit will be with him. He, he has been taught survival skills. He's learned from the elders the ways of the wilderness. But up until this point, he's always been with the elders. Now he's left in the woods all alone. It's dark. You can imagine all the sounds, and every sound gets amplified. Uh, every sound uh, becomes a, a predator, something dangerous in the woods. Finally, he falls asleep. The next morning, at dawn, he wakes up, rubs the sleep from his eyes, and looks around, and he sees an amazing sight because not very far away, just feet away, really, stands his father or one of the elders with a bow and arrow, keeping watch. And he realizes that all night long, when he thought he was alone, his father, one of the elders, has been standing watch all the time. It's a passage into adulthood for him. It's this coming to grips that he's not alone, even when he thinks he's alone. And for us, as we come to live in Christ and Christ in us, we know that we are not alone. That's the source of our joy. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say, rejoice, Paul says. Now, this is not just um, an abstract concept, but it's real. This level of joy, this level of confidence and hope and love and peace, the very things we've been talking about through Advent, this last week, three friends posted messages on Facebook that speak powerfully to this. And I asked their permission to share those with you. And I want you to listen for love and hope and peace and joy in the midst of this. I want you to listen for words about incarnation, about God coming to us in Jesus and how we ourselves as the body of Christ also participate in incarnation as we are God's people in the world. The first one is a friend of mine who, named Russell Minton. Russell has been a friend since third grade. We met in the third grade. Russell, a couple of weeks ago, was out in the backyard with his wife and he suddenly couldn't put words together, couldn't speak. He thought he was having a, a stroke and went in for tests and they discovered a brain tumor at the speech uh, center of his brain. And he had surgery this last week and then we'll have further treatments. And one thing that, that struck me this week in what Russell posted and in conversations that we had is this deep confidence and a kind of, a kind of joy even in the midst of this. He wrote, I cannot even begin to fully convey all the vast levels of gratitude running through my soul for all the tremendous love and support from you all. I thank you for the powerful ministry you all are making so real in my soul. I love you all immensely. I hope I get to take the next steps in recovery by going home today where the next leg of the journey begins. Life is 
and life must go on for us all. Rejoice, he says, and enjoy your days. The second one is from someone that many of you undoubtedly know, and that's Reverend Carl Travis, who is the pastor at First Presbyterian Church here in Fort Worth and a, and a friend of mine. Carl sent out a letter to his congregation on Monday informing them that he has to go on disability and he won't be able to continue to be uh, their pastor. Um, he's had a, a, a condition for six years or so and, and uh, it's finally gotten to the point, this progressive condition, that, um, that he cannot uh, continue. And here's the letter he wrote. Friends in Christ, peace and grace to you amidst this season of incarnation. In Jesus, God comes to be with us, experiencing our lives hand in hand, step by step. The church engages in incarnational ministry when its members encourage and care for one another in Christ's name. You have been remarkably and wholly compassionate in caring for me, Jackie, and our family since I began having health challenges. For six long years, you have nourished and waited for me through a great many hospitalizations, surgeries, procedures, and recuperations. I make my living with words, but words escape me when I attempt to express my bottomless gratitude for your kindnesses. Your love has sustained and inspired me and changed me forever. I'm sad, of course. I did not plan to end my work life at 55 or so abruptly, and yet I have sensed God's grace and care every step of this unplanned journey. God has been so very generous with me and with us. My gratitude overshadows my sadness. My hope envelops my fear. My trust in God dwarfs the pains and challenges of our present circumstance. All things work together for good for those who love the Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you now and forever. Carl. And so I know these two brothers that I've, that I've uh, shared would, would cherish our prayers. And I will certainly report to them that we are in prayer for them. The third one that I want to share is from a member of our congregation. And, um, and that's Sarah Nader. And Sarah, thank you for allowing me to, to read this. Sarah posted this yesterday. Um, they lost their dear husband and father, E.J., uh, last December 26th. And she posted this. One year. It's hard to believe that one of the most amazing people I've ever met has been gone for almost a year. E.J. was an amazing man who gave me the best gifts in the world, true love, incredible patience and understanding in his entire heart, but most of all, our girls. If not for them, and the many amazing friends who have helped me in so many ways, I'm not sure that I'd be standing today. Ultimately, my strength comes from none other than Jesus. But EJ was my rock, my best friend, and the most amazing husband. Has this year been difficult? Absolutely. Will the days, weeks, and months ahead be difficult? Without a doubt. Will Ashley, Lexi, and I be okay? Of course we will. We will find comfort in the faith and strength that E.J. showed us while here, but more importantly, in our Lord, who will constantly be holding us tightly and loving us without end. What a beautiful, beautiful statement of faith. Thank you for letting me share that. See, the faith, the hope, the love, the joy that we experience in Advent goes deep and we all participate in it as we care for one another. Let's pray. Our gracious and loving God, for all your blessings, we are grateful. We thank you for the love, the peace, the hope, and the joy that is ours because we have our life in you. Help us, O oh God, as we go from this place to go knowing that we do not go alone, but you go with us. We lift up in our hearts and in our minds those who have special need for 
your grace, for your peace, for your hope, for your love, for your joy in their lives right now, who are facing difficult circumstances, who are experiencing grief in this holiday season, who are facing difficulties or uncertainties or an illness. We pray for your peace and strength and healing for them. We pray it in Jesus' name who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As our ushers come forward and we prepare for our morning offering, we remind you that in your pew acts this morning are special Christmas offering envelopes. If you're not prepared for a second mile of gift today, you could bring it tomorrow evening, take it home with you. It'll support such ministries as Kids Hope, the Justice Ministry, Kenya, Costa Rica, Food for Kids, variety of ministries listed as well. So please remember today how generous God is toward us that we might be generous toward one another. As we close our service this morning, prepare to go out to be God's people in the world. First of all, I'd like to share, we'll only sing the first and last verses of our closing hymn. And also, if this is your Sunday, to unite with us as a part of our community of faith. What a special day it would be for you. Dr. Lamar Smith will be up front, Dr. Brewster to welcome you and begin the new year coming up. As a member of our congregation, what a joy it'd be to have you part of our community of faith. And finally, uh, we had a very special birthday yesterday. Uh, someone's leaving a decade uh, coming up. 
And uh, if you stay after the postlude, the wonderful postlude Peggy uh, Graff has prepared for us, we'll be singing a special tribute to uh, someone <laughs> special here. Dr. Brewster had his birthday uh, yesterday, so we celebrate you, Tim, and that special day in your life as well. Now, let us close together. Quick announcements. Remember the services tomorrow in the sanctuary, our Christmas Eve services. And also, as Reverend Graff mentioned earlier, we are trying to close the gap on our, our giving for this year. Uh, we are about 17% away from uh, finishing out, a little bit ahead of where we were this time last year, but we have some work to do. And so I hope uh, that you will help close that gap by uh, completing your commitment. Uh, or by giving an extra uh, gift uh, to the church for this year. Uh, also, if you haven't uh, made your commitment for 2019, certainly our finance committee would appreciate that so they can have that for their uh, planning for the budget for next year. Our gathering will soon be ended. Where will we go and what will we do? May grace, peace, hope, love, and joy forever accompany you. Amen.